Hello, my name is Nicholas Bell, and it is my honor to speak with Gudmundur Honor Gudmundsen for his, uh, and we're speaking on his sophomore film, Beautiful Beings, which is Iceland's official submission for best international feature. Uh, so congratulations on that distinction. Thank you very much. Um, I have, uh, this is the second time I've seen the film. Uh, it premiered in uh, the Berlin Film Festival in the Panorama. Uh, so uh, the novelty of getting to watch it again relatively uh, soon after I saw it for the first time was kind of like, uh, it, it felt like a dream <laughs> to me, a very dark, almost maybe a nightmare because it's a very dark <laughs> film. Um, and there are a lot of dreamlike sequences in it, which I'm sure we'll touch on, but I, I wanna commend you on uh, being able to really authentically represent this separation between adolescents and adults, because I feel like a, a lot of films don't really do that. And I was wondering if you could first talk about your approach to doing that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been working with the, this kind of theme of youth, uh, adolescents and, and kids since uh, I started with my short films. Um, and there's something in those years that I, I really enjoy reconnecting to, but also I, I had quite turbulent teenage years myself. And I remember, you know, my parents and people in school and so on, didn't really have any clue what was going on within our life. It was kind of like a double, double life you know with the one that they knew about and then the one they didn't see and uh, I always remembered kind of wanting to be able to share that with you know so, you know both the good sides and the bad sides you know sometimes I you know I needed help but couldn't reach for it and sometimes I also wanted them just to see you know that those boys are pretty special even though they behave you know, or have the, you know, have that tendency of behavior. Yeah, a, a, a question that you ask kind of in your own director's statement of, about the film is also really resonant with me about yeah. can, can boys who seem like bad influence still be good friends? And I, I think your yeah. film obviously answers that, but it resonates with me in my own experiences as a teenager uh, <laughs> in a different part of the world. Um, yeah. So I, I also read that you we're having dreams. That's kind of the inspiration for this project. And if, and I know you studied screenwriting. So if you can talk sure. about how how the project originated and how it kind of came together. Yeah, I and um, after my first feature, Hearthstone, I I re did, really didn't want to repeat myself. So I thought, oh, now I'll, now I have to do a film about the grown-ups. <laughs> and then uh, I kept having this almost nightmarish dreams about a certain period in my teenage, uh, you know, years, where uh, I was acting quite violent and my friends as well. And I kept just having this, yeah, dreams about that period. And I kept pushing it away because I didn't want to go into that theme. But then one day I decided to sit down and start writing kind of a little bit kind of memories and moments and stuff like that. And then it just kind of opened like a flood. And I realized, hey, there's actually a great story. Uh, yeah, here and, and a very interesting characters that I have to continue and, and explore and, and write about. But the, the film is fiction still, you know, people do know that. Yes, yeah, for sure. Um... And it, it, again, I think it is a lot darker than Heartstone, which I've also I just rewatched uh, as well. Uh, and again, there are you know points of comparison because we're talking about coming of age uh, at a certain point in youth, if you will. Uh, but it feels like a much different film. And you even using the same cinematographer, Sterla Branth Grublin, who's very yeah. notable Norwegian cinematographer. Uh, I know that you have said you've had a very close collaboration with him. Uh, can you talk about the visual approach and how that changed from Hearthstone? Yeah, I mean, in Hearthstone, um, that shot in the countryside in a small town where the nature plays a major role. It's almost like a, you know, a third character in every scene, the nature. You know, and, 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 and that's how it is living so close to the nature in Iceland. It, it influences your life a lot. Um, and now it's in Reykjavik, the city, 
and the nature doesn't really play such a big role you know and and so we had to kind of discover our visuals um and kind of the poetry more within the housing and the rooms we are in and and the streets of Reykjavik beautiful beings feels almost more claustrophobic to me being mm -hmm. in the city and so closely focused on these uh you know especially the four young boys uh yeah. I, I was kind of missing the escapism of nature uh, of Hearthstone and mm -hmm. how animals and nature factor into beings beautiful beings is there there are really uh kind of terrible things happening to animals but they're in the kind of off screen <laughs> yeah um and I read you also in where you were influenced by Inaratu and uh, the Sopranos, uh, especially if you want to talk about the um, kind of the, the dream sequences, uh, because Adi's mother is clairvoyant in the film and how you work that, I thought, very well and subtly into the fabric of the film. Yeah, I mean, when I saw, for example, Beautiful by Inaratu, uh, I was deeply touched by how he approached the supernatural elements of the main character. He's clairvoyant in the film. And I thought you know, it was the first time I've seen this done in a film where I really connected to it because in Iceland, we have this, uh, it's quite strong uh, element in Iceland, you know, people discussing their dreams, mm. believing in them. And, you know, even, you know, uh, the, the intuition, you know, and all that. And uh, mostly when it's portrayed in films, it becomes like it takes over the story. But there, it was just like a side story within the, in the film itself. And, and I wanted that for beautiful beings as well. I wanted that to be a side story, something that influences the main character, helps him discover that even though he loves his friends, you know, he has to leave this path and, and kind of stand on his own. Um, yeah, you know, and I was uh, kind of in that sense, and I saw Sopranos, I watched the whole TV series, and I loved it, and yeah. I saw yeah. moments in Sopranos where he was having a dream about his friend, and I think the dreams are quite accurate, you know, to revealing something that he maybe knew subconsciously, right. or maybe not, but it, it, it's giving him, you know, it, it's helping him. I, I think in the journey for the character of Addy in the film, it's I really like how it's kind of building on how teens learn to be empathetic because he's yeah. he's really very kind of cruel and callous towards Bali at first uh, in how there's this toxic edge to their relationship that becomes very poignant and meaningful uh, and helpful to both of them, uh, which I really liked. Uh, it, it, you know, for American films dealing with teen boys, there, there aren't too many examples that kind of hit as heavy as this, but I was, of course, reminded of uh, Stand By Me or, or Kids yeah. a little bit. Uh, were any of those, were, I'm, I'm curious about any other inspirations in the back of your head. But they, both of those films you mentioned, Stand By Me, uh, that's like a overall inspiration every time I'm working because I think it's such a beautiful crafted film, both storytelling wise and the characters. And I think the characters reveal so much of, you know, how young kids are. Um, kids, there's this edge in kids, this kind of liveness, explosiveness, you know, that I think portrayed very well the behavior of teenagers. So both of those films kind of influenced and we discussed them, me and, my Sturt, me and Sturtla, my cinematographer. And also a little bit Gummo by Harman Kori. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah there are like hints, hints of that i love that film when i saw it the first time yes yeah, same yeah uh harmony Karina. Yeah. um yeah. so for for heartstone uh, i i know that i believe that you had uh kind of the the young cast through kind of an eight-month acting course and did you have a similar approach with your cast uh, in this yeah yeah the same approach uh and now we actually had to add on a little bit because in Hearthstone, the kids are kind of playing characters that are most of them kind of close to themselves. Sure. But sure. this time in Beautiful Beings, all of the boys and almost all of the characters are playing characters or actors are playing characters that are quite far away from them in real life. And so we had to build, you know, up a little bit on that, but also just on a support system 
so we would not influence the kids in a negative way, you know, bringing them into those in into this world and in in this behavior. So we had to kind of make sure that 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 would be a positive growing experience for them, but not yeah. the opposite. Right. And I, I liked your statement about uh, intimacy coaches, actually, because, you know, there's yeah. some violence, sexual violence and rape. And, you know, with kids of this age filming that, uh, I like that you said it feels like we already always should have had that. Yeah. Because yeah. Not- and also for me as a director, it just it's so liberating, you know, both. Both, I think the process of doing the, the, you know, in this intimate coaching way, just the process is great, you know, and the re- end result is great for the, what we get on the camera, but it's also the liberating that I'm sure I'm not pushing anyone into a situation where he doesn't want to be in. Right. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, I, I think it, it's like, a, yeah, I don't really understand why it didn't come a long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting to, in retrospect to think on that. Um, yeah, yeah. And so working, so crafting these characters with these kids, many of, most of whom I believe this is kind of their first major yeah. acting experience. Uh, and as a screenwriter, how did the, how did your script change as you navigated this with them? Um, okay. I mean, I, I, I spent so much time on the script that I, it's pretty locked in stone when I start working with the actors. But what they bring is a lot of the kind of movements and behavior within the scene you know and 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 kind of you know refreshing my mind of being how it is to be a kid mm-hmm. you know so, yeah so, so it's more i think the liveliness that they bring you know but the maybe the sen- like the sub like what they say in the scenes is the same they kind of rephrase it maybe a bit to their own wording but it's more the kind of the energy and liveliness that they bring to the, that influences uh, influences the script. So maybe a scene that I thought would be, would be smaller becomes a bit bigger because of their input into it. I, and I ask that because there's in both Heartstone and Beautiful Beings, there's kind of a sense of discovery in watching it as is in I it captures that feeling of how those moments feel, which yeah. doesn't feel rehearsed. Um, no, I, I think I think that's a lot to do with the process uh, of how we shoot it with Sturla, because uh, we we give them the freedom to improvise their movements within the scene, and Sturla kind of follows them, uh, uh, you know, and it almost becomes like a dance between Sturla, uh, the actors, and me. So we're kind of dis- discovering the scene. Um, while we're shooting it, it has the same, you know, lines, you know, in and out point, but how they, how we execute it, we're kind of all discovering it together. Um, and I also, you know, th- there's a really interesting um, subtext, obviously, about, you know, masculinity and the, the performance of masculinity, but I, I really like how we have these young boys who the return of the two father figures is really what kind of causes the third act climax, which I really yeah. like. And that's where you have Olafur Dari Olafsson as uh, Bali's stepfather, who's I think a lot of uh, American audiences should probably readily recognize. But uh, yeah. was that always part of the climax? Is these two dad father figures coming in, and that's what's going to cause this tragedy? More with Olaf, the father of. Bali, like he he comes in and he was always like the part of the, the kind of the climax. And for me, it's a little bit about like a foreshadowing, you know, the older boys in the story. This is what they will become in a few years if they continue. Yeah. Oliver is the kind of the end result, you know, if they continue. Uh, about Atti's father, for me, that was always just a little kind of relief, like a little break, you know. <laughs> A little break in that film because it's been quite intense yeah and and and, and it's like a little breathing room and 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 gives a you know gives us a clear connection to Atti for a moment before we continue yeah. right I, th- I think yeah it's it's doing that it's doing a lot because or at yeah. least you know I, I was thinking he's also so frustrated at the absence of that of his dad yeah. and all of those feelings which you know, psychologically makes sense for why he does what he does in protecting Bali. Um, so yeah, all around just a, a very impressive uh, portrait of 
these these kids. Uh, I, I read that for your next feature, you're going to try something lighter with the fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I want to explore the su supernatural element further. I, I, I don't know either it's going to be something for the family or it will to, you know, be a little darker. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure yet. You know, yeah, yeah, like a darker in in a, in a different sense, not not violence, but more uh, supernatural elements. Well, a lot of original fairy tales are actually really dark. <laughs> Quite uh, dark, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And I think you could even read Beautiful Beings. I think is kind of a, a contemporary fairy tale. Uh, the, yeah. all, those elements are all there metaphorically, uh, yeah. which is interesting. Uh, but thanks for taking the time to speak with me and congratulations on your film and uh, the various uh, awards it's picked up and the distinction of being the submission is, uh, you know, quite important. Yeah, thank you very much. It was great uh, talking to you. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.